Let's finish up our section here on the envelope of our little building by assigning the construction assemblies or the constructions for the walls and the floor of our building. At that point, we'll have all of our construction assemblies entered correctly, and uh, we should have a, a pretty good start on our little Passive House project here. Before we go any further, though, I'm going to come in here and select my ceiling, and I'm going to come up here to set surface params. I'm going to change the name because it's a different name is a it's a dumb name. So I'm going to call this um, I'm just going to call this ceiling surface or something like that. Just you know. Okay, uh, so now that that's done. Um, oh, also, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't, if you've been following along, um, you know, and you want uh, in your uh, in order to speed things up and make things work a little uh, better, I, usually I would recommend leaving this uh, set to false until you're, you know, off until you're ready to write everything to the PHPP. Otherwise, every time you make a small change, it's going to rewrite the entire PHPP, which is going to slow things down a little bit for sure. So I'd, I recommend keeping this set to false. Um, you know, you can keep it on if you want to see, if you literally want to see the, the impact of, of every single um, uh, change. But um, for, for now, let's turn that off and, um, and then uh, let's come back to our, our uh, Create MEV rooms over here. So, okay, how are we going to assign the wall information here? Well, we're going to use the same tool. Whoops. We're going to use the same tool in our PHPP, in our PH tools toolbar. We have our component editor library. So if I click on that guy, here's Ed's construction or Ed's ceiling construction at 0.053. And what I'd like to do is add some new elements here. And so I can do that by just using this add row. And I can come in here and I could say Ed's uh, wall. So let's do our walls. What kind of walls are we going to be building? Well, let's take a look at a sketch of the construction assembly. So let me pull that up. So here is the wall assembly that we want to build for our little building here. Again, if you've gone through our design PH, Therm, Flixo, or PHPP classes, you'd be familiar with this. Um, this is uh, just a simple double stud wall. You know, very common technique for simple, cold climate passive houses that need, you know, like a foot of insulation in order to get to those high performance levels. Um, works very well, very simple. It works well on simple forms. Um, becomes a little complicated when you get into complex geometry. So it has its place. Its place is not everywhere, but um, definitely has its place. So in any event, what do we have? We have a, we have a load-bearing outer uh, timber stud wall. We have a layer of uh, sheathing over the exterior. Um, we have another timber stud wall, which is gapped off of the first one by some continuous insulation. Again, a very common North American construction technique to use light or small timber elements to frame these walls with, um, and then fill the entire space in between the studs with insulation. In this case, notice we have a thick layer of continuous insulation and about a, at about a foot or um, what is that, uh, uh, 300 millimeters or so of insulation um, uh, throughout. We have an airtight and, and vapor control membrane on the interior face and then what's known as a service cavity on the interior side here, an air gap where we run all of our electrical and plumbing and then gypsum uh, finish on the interior side here. On the exterior, we have what's known as a rain screen gap, so a, a, a gap to provide drainage and uh, back drying, back venting for the cladding, and then some sort of a wood cladding on the exterior of the building. So a uh, very typical cold climate passive house construction for a place like North America where we use a lot of timber construction. Uh, this is a double stud wall. So how could we enter this information? So again, remember what I want, what I want to enter is just a, a total U value and a total thickness. Well, we could go off to PHPP and we could calculate it in PHPP. Absolutely, we could do it that way. Uh, I could also, as I said uh, before, use something like uh, Flixo or um, a Therm to calculate the U values. What would that look like? Well, this is an output report from uh, Flixo, which is a two dimensional heat flow simulation program. And you can see here we've got our outer stud and our outer stud, our inner stud, inner stud. We've got all of our insulation. We've got our. Uh, We've got our, um, the, our uh, service cavity on the interior side and then our gypsum wall board. And then you can see here we're simulating the heat flow through this assembly and coming up with a total 0.12 
U value for this assembly. This is an equivalent U value for that construction. This is just an alternate method for calculating the U value of an assembly. We can use things like numerical constructors like PHPP. We can also use things like two-dimensional heat flow simulation programs like Flixo or Therm. We could also go to something like ASHRAE 90.1 Appendix A or ISO 6946 and get a, get a value from a table of values. There's lots of different places you can get U values from for these types of, um, these types of models. In any event, here we've got a total thickness, uh, 419 millimeters, and a total U value, 0.12. So I can just take this information and enter it into my library here. So I've got Ed's wall. Why don't we call this actually Ed's double stud wall. And we said we had a U value of 0 0.12. 0 0.12. And we had a thickness of 0 0.419. And it was not interior insulated. Again, if you want to know what that means, it has to do with retrofits to existing masonry walls. Um, you can take a look at the PHPP or PHI rules for uh, clarification on that. It is not interior insulated, so we put a zero. If it was, we would put a one. OK, so there's Ed's double stud wall. And so I'll say OK. And now I'll come in here and I will select all of my second floor walls. I'll hold down the shift key, select all of my first floor walls. Notice that I was selecting, I was dragging a selection box from the, the right to the left. That's known as a crossing box. And so everything that I cross over is going to get selected. Actually, I don't know if that's true in Rhino. Does it just work? Oh yeah, no, it does work. So Rhino does have that. So if I was to drag from the left to the right, that's known as a selection box. And so in that case, only things which are entirely inside of my bot, the, the selection box will get selected. Whereas a crossing box from the right to the left, anything that, your that the selection crosses over gets selected. Anyway, it's just like an old, old, uh, old AutoCAD uh, verbiage. Uh, so I'm gonna select all, in any event, I'm gonna select all of those and I'm gonna, s I'm gonna come up here to my Passive House Tools and I'm gonna go to Set Surface Parameters Click on set surface parameters. Notice that the name varies, so you can ignore that one. And select assembly. In this case, I'm going to assign Ed's double stud wall to all of those assemblies. Leave that set to varies, and it won't change any of the names. It's uh, wall and outdoors. And say OK. And there we go. Now each of these has assigned to it our double stud wall. If I push that geometry through again in my, uh, so if I just force that geometry to update by pushing it through. And now take a look at my EP constructions. I'll see a lot more information here. So I've got my Ed's double stud wall, Ed's double stud wall, Ed's double stud wall, null, and then my ceiling construction. What's the null? Well, it's our, it's our floor assembly or our ceiling assembly here, right? We haven't assigned anything to this middle assembly. So that's still showing up as a null, but otherwise everybody's been fully assigned here on the second floor. What about the first floor? How are we doing on the first floor? Again, I'm gonna connect up my EP construction here. In this case, we've got two nulls. So I've got four Ed's double stud wall, zero, one, two, three. Yeah, so four double stud walls and then two nulls. Right, we need to do our floor. So we still need to assign a material for the floor assembly. So let's come back to our pH tools and we'll come into our uh, component editor and now we need to make a floor. So I'll call this Ed's really good floor. And let's say for purposes of argument, let's say that we're just testing things out. We're trying some stuff out. Maybe we don't even know what the floor is made of yet. Maybe we're still in the early design phases, and so we just need to lay something in. Well, let's say for purposes of argument that it's going to be like an R30 floor, something like that. Or maybe it's an R20 floor. So let's say that it's an R20 floor. So if it's an R20 floor, we take one over the R value, it gives us a U value of 0.05. So I can come in here and I can say, 0.05 IP, 
and that'll convert it over to a metric U value. So if I, you know, I work in the U.S., we commonly work with um, with R values instead of U values when we're sort of, um, you know, uh, working with contractors and thinking about projects. So maybe I would say I want an R, you know, an R, like I said, an R20 floor or maybe an R25 floor. Oops, an R25, let's say R25 floor. And I first want to convert that to a U value. So I take one over the R value. It gives me my U value. So let's say 0 0.04. And I come in here to the U value, say 0 0.04. But notice here that I have to input in watts per square meter degree Kelvin. And so in order to convert that over, I can just say, oh, I entered that information in IP units. And when I hit enter, it'll do that conversion for me. And I could do the same thing with the thickness there. So let's say maybe, I don't know, maybe I want to be... Um, Maybe I want to be, I, I, don't, I don't know, it doesn't really matter for our purposes here, but let's say, because this is our total U value, so um, let's just say like 200 millimeters or something like that. Um, so I could enter that as inches if I want, or I could just say like, you know, 2.2. And then is it interior insulated? No, it's not um, in, in this case. So we do not have to go load these values from somewhere else. We can use stand-in or assumed values or hypothetical values. We can say, well, I think I want to get to something like an R25. Let's test it. And let's see how it does. And then maybe I have to come back and refine or revise that. Maybe I would go to uh, uh, ASHRAE 90.1 Appendix A and I would look in the table of values and I would find an assembly that I like. Maybe I would just use one from the Honeybee uh, catalogs of values. Maybe I would go to ISO 6946 and I would calculate an assembly using numerical constructors. Maybe I would go to ASHRAE Chapter 27 or Chapter 25 and follow the numerical procedures there. Maybe I would go to Flixo. Maybe I would go to Therm. There's lots of different ways that we can build these U values. Right? There are many different ways that we can enter these U values. Um, and uh, hopefully, between the constructor here and the PHPP constructor and the native Honeybee tools, there's enough different tools, enough different methods for you to sort of get that, get whatever information you want into, into, the, into the model here. In any event, I'm going to use a sort of assumed uh, value. So let me even do it more explicitly. I'll say R25. Obviously, R25 in IP units, um, just so that we kind of, you know, so that it's really explicit there. And OK, so I've built my really good floor assembly. It's not that good. R25, kind of good floor. Depends on the climate, I suppose. In any event, say OK and come in here, select the floor assembly. I'll come up here to my set surface params. And I'll come down, and from the list of assemblies, I'll say it's kind of good floor assembly R25. Say OK. And now if we push this through, notice down here that our Ed's kind of good floor assembly is now popping up in the list. We still have that last null, but that's the ceiling assembly here. We don't need to assign anything there. That's not a heat loss surface, so I don't care about it on the PHPP side. If we were trying to be really accurate and we were going to go do an energy plus model of this at the same time, we would want to assign an actual construction there. For most cases, the default construction for those interstitial spaces is going to be fine, unless you're in some sort of... Um, interzonal situation where one zone is at a very different temperature than another zone. Obviously, in those cases, the conductivity and the, um, the value between spaces is going to matter a lot. But in most cases, it's not going to have a huge effect or shouldn't have a huge effect. So anyway, we have now assigned all of our assemblies into our project. And notice that our Grasshopper definition has stayed pretty tidy. We only have a few components here, but we've assigned a lot of information, and that's one of the reasons that I like doing that. I like the ability to click on something and see immediately what values are assigned to it without sort of hunting through the grasshopper definition. And certainly I don't like having you know tons and tons of different components and spaghetti all over the place in, in our grasshopper scene. So. Again, you can work with it any way you want. If you want to use those native Honeybee tools, that's totally fine. If you want to use these uh, Rhinoside tools, those will also work for you as well.
One way or another, though, we're going to get all that information and we're going to feed it into our honeybee faces. That's going to flow through into our rooms. Those get combined into the model, and the model gets exported out to our PHPP. So as a very last step here, let's take a look at our PHPP now and see where that leaves us. So I'm going to come all the way over here to my export to PHPP section, and let's take a look if we just set this to true at how this looks at this point. All right, so here's our PHPP. Here's Ed's kind of good floor. Uh, here's Ed's ceiling. Here's my double stud. And here's all of our tidy names so that we know what's what. All the groups are getting assigned. All the surface areas are coming in. All of the orientations and angles of inclination are coming in. Um, I should note this information here around reduction factors and absorptivity and emissivity. Currently, these are all set to just be using these default values. We'll probably build out a, a tool to allow you to set those if you wanted to. Um, but right now, they're all just going to use sort of standard default values for those. Um, so you, you don't have any ability to control those at the moment through the native tools. We'll look later on at some of the, um, there, there are ways to control this, but um, it's a little roundabout. In any event, here, uh, all of our information is now nicely flowing through. Notice all of these, um, lastly, all of these constructors are showing up here in my U values section. So for instance, Ed's ceiling construction right here. Uh, Ed's kind of good floor assembly right here. And Ed's double stud wall assembly as well. So at this point, we have set up all of our assemblies and our geometry. So we have the rough outlines of a PHPP. If though we were to go back to the verification worksheet, mm, still a lot of blanks, mm, still no results, still no TFA. Uh, if we go to check, there's still a lot of errors. We got errors in ventilation, errors in summer ventilation, numbers in PRR. So we still got a lot of information yet to encode or at least a bit more information to encode before we can start to see some actual results here from our PHPP. We should also note, if I go back to my Rhino scene, we should also note that we currently just have an opaque box, not a very exciting passive house building. So I think when we come back in the next section, before we turn our attention to things like room geometry and TFA and ventilation systems, I think we need to keep going on the envelope and I think we'll build out our windows. So I think in the next section, we should take a look at what it takes to create some windows in our passive house building. So I will see you back in the next section and we'll start to actually add some life to this project and add some windows to our assembly here.